Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Parts Talk. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate each and every one of you. Now, I know a lot of mechanics are going to find this one really, really funny. And you've probably heard by now that Tesla has lost over 55% in their Q1 earnings over the past year. And this will be blamed on the shortfall in the market for electric vehicles. Car sales are up in particularly for smaller traditional cars. The overall car market is down because of the influx of electric vehicles that have been forced on the average consumers. Consumers don't want them. And the market share for EVs has somewhat increased up to this point in time but in recent reports the figures have been falling significantly however one could not but notice what goes on beyond the service gates which is where i come from while everyone has been commenting on tesla's performance and chinese ev the chinese ev market is also experiencing a lull a ev crisis over there i could not but notice the growing concern take a look at this headline this is the fly in the ointment evs head for junkyard as mechanic shortage inflates repair cost so who's going to work on your car when it breaks down when you get that brand new luxury ev once again this shows how the car sales market will seem to forget repairs and maintenance. Before I go into detail in this article, take a quick look at this video right now. This line of hundreds of destroyed Teslas might be one of the craziest things I've ever seen at the salvage auction. Over the past couple of years, something really interesting has happened in the salvage Tesla market. There's simply not enough people out there willing to buy them and rebuild them at the rate they're wrecked, so they've turned into nothing more than commodity cars. Now, this doesn't apply to plaids or other high-end models, but a lot of the lower-end ones are getting sold off for essentially scrap value on the battery. Tesla's manufacturing strength and therefore low cost of new parts, along with their unfriendliness towards rebuilt ones, have surely compounded the problem, but regardless, this is something you don't see in the internal combustion engine market. Now, I'm by no means an EV hater. In fact, I daily drive a Tesla, but it does raise the question of what these salvage yards are going to look like five, ten years from now. Is the market going to sort itself out? Are cars destined to be treated like used iPhones? Let me know what you think. Electric vehicles have long been heralded as the green alternative to traditional combustion engine and offer the promise of reduced emissions and a cleaner environment. The reality is not as straight forward as it seems and contrary to popular belief the manufacture of ev batteries entails a substantial environmental cost with each battery requires an extensive amount of fossil fuel mining for raw materials for the raw materials in which they use to manufacture these batteries and with estimate suggesting nearly 200 tons of raw materials per battery the mining process not only contributes to the envir environmental degradation but also raises concerns about resource depletion and ethical mining practices beyond the production phase the longevity of evs is another area of concern you're seeing here in this video and despite claims of durability and reliability evs have shown to have shorter lifespans compared to internal combustion engines even minor damage to an ev can result in irreparable harm primarily due to the shortage of qualified mechanics trained to handle ev repairs and this shortage of skilled mechanics is a is a pressing issue that affects not only the individual car owners but also insurers and repair costs insurers often find it more cost effective to total just write off the electric vehicles with minimal damage rather than invest in extensive repairs and this practice not only increases the premiums as to what I have reported in the past and several others but for all drivers and it contributes to the premature disposal of otherwise salvageable vehicles this article which i'm going to go through a little of it says electric car sales already are in a funk in key markets around the globe challenges finding enough repair technicians threatens to further stifle demand in the uk where consumer uptake has stagnated for the better part of two years. A dirt of mechanics trained to handle the most advanced EV fixes is helping to drive up repair costs according to insurers and repair companies like the AA, which provides roadside assistance across the UK. Add in expenses like long wait times for replacement parts 
and underwriters are opting to total the cars with relatively benign damage, prematurely consigning electric models to the junk heap, whereby certain cars could get a fender bender, you take it to a college, college and repair shop, they'll have your traditional gas powered car repaired in no time, ready for the road, depending on the extent of the damage, but most of them are salge salge salvageable. <laughs> salvageable. As the article is stating, electric vehicles, everything is interconnected with the chassis and so many electrical components are interlined, it's almost difficult for the current set of mechanics who are not experienced in doing repairs in electric vehicles. So few of them, as a matter of fact, and there, where there is few, you're going to have to be paying premium prices to have these repairs fixed. A seemingly simple crash that damages the battery for or the compartment housing it can cause a complete write-off of, of the vehicle, said Darko Di Stefano, managing director of of insurers AXA AXA SA's UK retail division ultimately that pushes up the price of insurance fewer than 10% of the UK's 236,000 auto mechanics are qualified to work directly on EV batteries are their cases according to the Institute of Motor industry which provides training and certification the training institution themselves are telling you there is a shortage of mechanics to work on these vehicles in the uk and while many technicians can perform less demanding tasks the most challenging repair repairs require extra training given the complexity of the circuits and risk of electrocution so mechanics must now become electricians i remember back in the days when it was all about specialization if you worked in a large dealership or, distrib or distributor you will have transmission department different that repairs the transmission or the gearboxes then you'll have an electrical department different that works on air conditioning wiring harnesses comp ac compressors starters and any other electrical component and then you'll have your wheel alignment and balancing mechanics who only does that in which they were tasked, right? Changing out control arms and shock absorbers and steering links and all the works and do the alignment and balancing of the tires. And then you'll have your body and repair department that does repairs, auto repairs to the vehicle. You'll have your upholstering department that does with the interior cleaning and anything else. And then you'll have your paint shop as it stands for when the body repair department is done, is taken to the paint shop to have a freshly new coat all over the car or, or just repair the affected area and of course you have your general oil change quick lube era for quick turnaround but all of that was eliminated when we had the rise of the master technician who will actually go out and does everything he will be certified and skilled to take on every single component in which specialization was eliminated don't get me wrong we still need specialization but as the world turns and the cycle evolves now we're going right back to that mechanics are now going to have to be electricians further down in the article the answer is risen quite a lot because you are dealing with no mistakes really darren norton and aa trainer said during the visit in birmingham it's instant death on these systems and drivers are also concerned that a collision is more likely to lead and to an ev write-off according to the uk consultant Tacham Research. Long lead times for deliveries and a shortage of functioning charge points are also holding back demand for environmentally friendly vehicles, it said in a report last year. A number of my video videos I've lamenting that fact over and over that a lack in the charging infrastructure is preventing a lot of people from owning electric vehicles one comment said i should get off this ev mandate thing because it's becoming repetitive however one doesn't understand that how important it is to echo these information over and over so that they get it when we watch television and we see the same ads on tvs being repeated over and over again it's the same thing. A lot of people, they generally, do, generally don't get involved into things unless it affects them directly. When the EV mandate come and then you hear that the dream car you've always been desired to purchase is no longer available, what are you going to do? And if there's no qualified mechanics around to work on this vehicle, what are you going to do? And EV sales are falling all in part of range anxieties and the cost of purchasing one of these electric vehicles. So with 1 million EVs on the roads already, the crunch is forecast to get worse. Repair shops are starting to train up staff 
but the UK will still be short by about 30,000 qualified technicians by 2035 when a ban on the sale of new combustion vehicles takes place, according to IMI estimates. They have 30,000 in Canada here. We're looking at 76,000. UK sales of battery electric vehicles have tread water as a share of the market since 2022. They stood at 15% in March, according to the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders. Insurance costs are double those of conventional vehicles, Bloomberg reported in January. So if you're paying an average of around five hundred dollars for a traditional, I'm just for argument sake, it's five hundred dollars for a traditional combustion engine car right now. I'm using an average of five hundred dollars. It's a thousand dollars if you own an electric vehicle because of the electric vehicles that are being pushed on the market, and insurance companies are now forced to cough up thousands of dollars to replace these vehicles in the event that something happens to them. We, the regular folks who chose not to partake in the purchase of electric vehicles, have to also help to foot the outstanding amount of these costs. So it's affecting us both directly and indirectly. Other factors are helping to skew insurers one straightforward decision on whether to repair or replace a car after an accident. Replacement parts are expensive and take longer to arrive from abroad, adding to downtimes for damaged cars and, th and driving up ancillary costs like car rentals. Usually takes, depending on where you are, it takes up to a month to get specialized parts, two weeks, three days. Where electric vehicles are concerned, it is going to take much, much longer because the manufacturers they don't have any distribution network for parts to actually have these items sitting on a shelf waiting hoping in the, in the event that you have a collision a lot of people don't understand how much of the supply chain will be affected once electric vehicles take to the mainstream how many people are going to lose their jobs further down it says when the settlement cost approaches or exceeds the value of the vehicle the insurers will typically take ownership and either scrap it, break it up for parts, or fix it and sell it again if the damage is minimal. UK auto dismantler Syntec has seen a 55% increase in electric car and van disposals over the past year, it said on its website. It set up an operation to recycle expensive battery materials like lithium and nickel. At least he's seen another trade after this. So where he's losing on one end, he sees battery recycling as another component or another business that he can get involved in. High repair costs have long dogged EV makers like Tesla, which lacks the dedicated service network of traditional car manufacturers. Hertz, the US retail car giant, had to junk Teslas when the cost of fixing easily damaged cars like radar assemblies sent repair costs through the roof. We have all heard about Hertz. And if you're running on a large company like they do, collision is a high risk factor in the type of business that they have. And it wasn't cost effective for them to keep renting these high-end vehicles to ordinary people. You know, most of us, we don't have the same driving experiences. It's kind of sad going through all of these articles. I will leave the link in the description box below, but it only goes to show exactly where we are and what I've been saying over the past year, past two years, as, as a matter of fact, we have to keep telling people about the situation because without the information, there's no way they're gonna understand the complexities and the stress and disadvantage that awaits them. Ultimately, the goal of achieving a sustainable transportation requires a holistic approach that addresses not only vehicle emissions but also the entire life cycle of electric vehicles. And this includes improving battery recycling technologies, extend, expanding and trading opportunities for EV mechanics, and promoting the longevity of all vehicles through responsible ownership and maintenance practices. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to grab a copy of my ebook, The Parts Manager Guide. Please smash that like button on your way out. It will only take you 1.5 seconds to do so. Until next time.